Hey guys, follow along in this tutorial and learn how to create an interactive poster with animation using Adobe InDesign. In this lesson, I'll cover how to design a football themed poster with animation on page load and interactive game stats that you can scroll through. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. All right, let's get started by creating a new document. I'm going to click new file that'll bring up the new document window click on the web tab and then in the width field let's type in 11 inches hit your tab key a couple times and in the height field let's make that 17 inches you want to make sure that the orientation is set to portrait we only want one page and the margins we can leave at 36 pixels all the way around click the preview box there to see your page set up in real time and then once you're satisfied go ahead and click create. In my CC libraries here you can see that I have all the assets I'll be using for this tutorial. Of course you can find them in the download folder. You can find that link below in the description. I'm going to go back to my properties panel. The first thing we want to do here is actually build out the background. So I'm going to click on the rectangle frame tool and draw out a frame that fills the entire page. I'm going to go back to my CC libraries and I have a texture here, which is I'm just going to drag onto the layout and drop right into that frame. You could do the exact same thing if you're pulling it from your desktop to the layout. And of course, you can go to file and place to bring in artwork that way as well. So I'm going to click on the donut or the content grabber, do shift option command C to make that that artwork fit. The, the frame so fill the frame proportionally and now what I want to do is click out and click on just the frame itself don't click on the content grabber and I have a color here that I'm gonna reference I'm gonna click that and you can see if I pull this down there's the fill there and what I want to do now is just add a blend mode to this so I'm gonna go back to my properties panel and make this multiply and change the opacity to 35. Perfect, now I'm gonna add another layer to this. So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna click it, Command C, and sorry, Command C, and then Command V to create another copy. And you can see I have my other copy here. Same thing, but in this case, I'm gonna go to my swatches panel, and I'm gonna make this black with a 30% tint and what I want to do now, you could see if I click the donut or the content grabber, it's still 35% opacity and the multiply is still applied. What I want to do here though is add a gradient feather to add kind of like a shadow look. So I'm going to, I'm, I still have this clicked, I still have it selected. I'm going to go back to my effects um, drop down here which you can access in the properties panel or you can go to window effects and bring the actual window. And then you just wanna click the effects drop down, and let's choose gradient feather. Now by default, it's gonna, the type of feather, it will be linear, but we want radial, okay? And the other thing we wanna do is actually reverse the gradient. You can see it goes from dark to light. We wanna reverse that, and you could just do that by clicking this little icon here. So reverse it, and you can see, you kind of get like a spotlight kind of effect to it. You can play around with the gradient stops and then the middle slider here if you want to make that more intense. Something like that is fine for what we're doing today. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see now if I pull that over, we have our background for this tutorial and we'll bring in some other content. But next, we want to bring the artwork in next. So we have to remove the background from the image. So we're just going to switch over to Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to use the quick selection tool to remove the background. Then we'll add the artwork or the main image to this poster. So we'll do that next. I've opened the main image in Photoshop. You can find it in the folder. It's called football underscore player dot JPEG. And because this is a clean background, it'll be pretty simple to remove. The first thing I want to do in Photoshop here is just right click and duplicate the layer. I just do this just in case I need to reference that original background again, but we'll primarily we'll be working off of this background layer. I'm going to click on the quick selection tool, which is my favorite tool to do selections in Photoshop. 
and there's a select subject button at the top of the uh, workspace here, which works off of artificial intelligence. So it's, it's basically Adobe Sensei, which will pick up and detect the subject in this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and you'll see that the marching ants will appear on my, my image. Now you could simply just create a uh, layer mask from this, but I wanna refine that edge and I wanna refine the selection. So I'm gonna click select and mask also in the top portion here. It's right next to select subject. So let's click that. And if I zoom in here, you can see the areas that the Adobe Sensei may have missed. Actually it did miss. So this any, anywhere you see the white areas here, um, those are areas to clean up. Now I'm just gonna do pretty a quick job on this. Um, you, you, you would spend more time to refine this further. Um, on the left hand side here, there's a couple tools that I like to use. So the first one is the refine edge brush tool. This is great for uh, refining hair, um, especially if it's a clean background, it's easier to pick up. So I'll click that. And if I go into this area here, I can just paint over this area here and it'll pick up those um, spaces that we missed here. And then you could just kind of refine it that way. And then this red here, that means that the selection went into the subject. So I wanna clean that up too. So if you want to paint and get those pixels or refine that edge, click on the brush tool. And this is like the brush tool that you would use not in the select and mask um, area. It's the same kind, it's the same concept. So, but only you have a negative brush and a positive brush. So if you're painting with the, the positive, obviously you're bringing that selection out, okay? And then if you overshoot it, see, if I overshoot it and I go too far, hold your option key, that would be Alt on Windows, and then you can bring that selection back in. Now, if that, um, if the, if the, you see, I'm in the overlay mode here. If it's too harsh, the red, you can actually play with the opacity if you wanna bring it in. So I'm just going to clean this up here. So anywhere where you see red is where the selection needs to be adjusted or refined in other words. So another area is probably down below here in between the subject's legs. You see that white space there? Basically what I like to do is just hold my option key and then paint around. It's okay if you get some of the legs, I'll make that up. So overshoot it and then get the area that you need. And then what I like to do is just not hold not hold option i'm in my negative or my positive brush now and then i just bring in the areas that i overshot if that makes sense okay so obviously this takes some time to do and you would spend more time refining that but basically if you want to subtract from the sub or the selection hold your option you could go up here and toggle between the positive and the negative but a simple way is just holding your option key and bringing it in. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because if you zoom out, you can see I still got that area. You would never notice if this is at full frame. There is some areas here that I think needs uh, some refining as well. Um, this area here. And then I think I'm happy with everything else for now. Um, Another thing I like to do when I'm refining the edges of an image is going to the smart radius here in the edge detection and clicking that where, right where it says smart radius here. And then what I'll do is I'll increase that to about two pixels and that just refines edges even more. And then what I can do is zoom out. Once you're satisfied with the selection, just go ahead and hit okay. Now that we've refined the edge and we tightened up the selection, we can go ahead and remove the background. So just make sure that you're clicked on the background copy layer. And in the layers panel, click on add layer mask. Now I just have to turn off this background layer and you can see that we removed the background. And a good way of kind of seeing if you've missed any areas is just adding an adjustment layer of a solid color and let's just choose blue for now and then just pull that in between. Actually, let's make that that gray because that's what color our poster will be. And you could see that 
I'm pretty happy with the selection we've made to remove the background, okay? So if, you've, if you have to make any adjustments, click on the layer mask. So that's the black thumbnail here. And if you wanna bring in any pixels, make sure that you're painting in white and then press B on your keyboard, okay? And if you wanna bring in any pixels, just paint the areas with your white brush, okay? If you wanna remove any pixels, say you wanna remove things, just uh, press X on your keyboard, that toggles from white to black, and then you could just remove, and then X brings it back in, okay? So we can go ahead now, and actually, uh, another thing I'd like to do here is just add a shadow down below to make it look like um, our, our football player here has a shadow under his feet. So what I'm gonna do is just bring in or create another layer here. You could do that by clicking this plus sign. That creates another layer. I'm gonna press B to bring my brush tool back up and I wanna paint in black, hit okay. And you wanna make sure that you, your brush is a good size, but the hardness is very low. We want a soft brush here. So 5% or even lower is fine. I wanna increase the size of this and the mode here, I have it set to multiply just to kind of um, add a little bit of opacity to blend that in. And then I'm just gonna go by his feet here and then just maybe hit just one little dab there. And I wanna bring it in between. Um, so you want, you want the, the football player to be above. And if I click this and do Command T or go up to edit and then free transform, I can increase or bring that something like so okay and if you want to add if you want to make it even lighter you can just go to your opacity here and just decrease it so it blends in more so if i click that you can see that there's a nice little shadow by his foot and that just adds a little bit more depth to our poster when we when we add the artwork in so now what you want to do is just save it out as a psd so go to file save as and save i'll save it to my computer and go to my january 17th uh, folder here and then i'm just i've already have one named footballplayer.psd you would hit save and then we'll reference that we'll hop back into indesign now and add that artwork next all right i'm back in indesign now and we'll bring in that image so i'm just going to drag it right onto my page here and you can see it's in my cursor. So I'll just click and drag to bring it in. And you can see the shadows there and you can see the background is removed, so that's good. I'm just gonna zoom out a bit to see what a good size is. I'm just gonna increase it or scale it up. To do that, shift command and then grab any of the handles and um, just scale it upwards. And I think that's a good size for now because we'll be adding a logo up here a title as well as some um, stats down below here and then his name so let's add his name in now i'm gonna grab the type tool and his name is alan jackson of course this is all fictional and let's just bump that up and the the fonts that we're using for this tutorial there's um we'll be using rift so it's an adobe font you can use something similar anything that's condensed uh works i like this font because it it has kind of like a sporty type feel to it um so let's just make it bold for now and i want to rotate this upwards so i'm gonna hover on the any of the corners and then just rotate it hold your shift shift key until you get to 90 degrees and then we'll put it somewhere like here it's fine again i'll scale it up let's see what size that is 85 might be too big let's go 80 is good now with this i want alan to be light so there's some good contrast there with his first and last name i'm going to select all of it and go to my libraries and i have this dark blue navy color that i have here so I'll make sure that I'm on, yeah, I'm on the stroke. So let's just move that, make sure that we're on our fill. And that now let's change that. And what I'll do here is also do option, drag another copy. 
and he's a sophomore. And I want to bump that down significantly. So to decrease text on the fly quickly is hold shift command or shift control on windows and less than. And I have this red color here. I want this to be, let's try Demi. And let's just make it something like 22. And I'm gonna hold my option key and my right arrow key to open up the tracking a bit. Then I'm just gonna do like a bullet point in between. And he's a running back. So I wanna make sure that's spelled correctly. I mean, have, that's running back, perfect. So that's good. I'm just gonna tighten up these text frames. Double click and then double click. And let's just bring it in closer to him. And then we could scale it up. So ideally to have something like his arm, see how his arm kind of goes into this space. So I can even maybe bring the position up a bit, something like that. Maybe just bring it like that is fine too. Perfect, let's see the overview. I'm happy with that. Maybe move it to the left a bit. Okay, I have a logo here. You can see this little, um, I guess it's a cougar. So I'm just gonna drop that in, place it up top. And let me just make another copy of this here. Rotate it back to zero. Place it right there. And this will be a lot smaller. So let's do like 20. And the name of this fictional college school, I have it here. It's the Knox City State. Knox City State Cougars. So let me type that in, Knox City State Cougars. Of course, you can follow along and use the same information I am or come up with your own, right? Let's really track this out to about 200 and Let's make it medium. Let's do Demi, okay? And then what I'll do is just bring this down a bit and see how that looks. Good, so we got the logo. Maybe that even down just a bit more. Let's track it out a bit more. Let's bump it up to about 20. Let's do 27, see how that looks. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna bring both of these elements down Something like that works, okay? So we have our logo, the name of the school. We have our football player. We have his name and position. Let's bring that down a bit. I think that's a good size. I don't wanna make his name too much bigger than that. And now we'll bring in his number and then the burst from the, um, the CC libraries here. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, let's bring in the burst next. So you can see I have it here in my CC libraries. You'll find the vector version of it in the download folder. Again, I'm just gonna drag it onto the layout. You can see it here. I'll just drop it in. It's the size that I already want it to be. So you may have to actually resize it, in which case you can do so by um, same thing. Hold shift command and then drag it in or outwards. I'm gonna send this to the back or backwards hold your command key and then use the square bracket, left square bracket to keep moving it backwards. Um, or just an easier way, let me just go back, hold shift command and send it all the way to the back and then hold your command key, that's control on windows and use your right square bracket to, to bring it forwards, okay? So that's where I want it to be. You can play with the opacity here. So let's do a multiply maybe see how that looks overlay let's see what works here best or we could just tone it down a bit the opacity here something like 30 works fine just so it's not so intense on the in the layout so let me get back to that if I, you notice once you start adding layers it's hard to click on things so the easiest way of accessing things that are behind other objects is hold your command or control on windows and click until you get to the one that you want so let's make this 35 i think 35 is good okay and we can always change that afterwards is fine 
Actually, you know what? I might even go even less because we're adding a number there. So let's do 20. 20 is good. All right, next, let's add his number. So you can see on his jersey, he's number 32. I wanted to use a similar type font. So for this, I'm using Musio Slab, also an Adobe font. So I'm gonna click on the type tool and drag out a box that's pretty large because we're gonna be making this pretty big. So I just typed in 32, shift command, hold option or alt as well, just to bring it up. I'm just using my greater then and I'm gonna bring it into the layout so you can see it. So right now it's um, Minion Pro as a default. So I'm gonna click that to select and let's make this Musio Slab 700, okay? And I'm gonna make this 600 point, which is may seem big, it is big, but we want it to be, okay? You see how it fills the space nicely? I'm gonna select that and I wanna make it this red that I have in my CC libraries here. It's the darker red, okay? I'm gonna select it again and let's choose the stroke now and choose the lighter red. And let's go to properties and I wanna make this about 10 point, okay? You can see I have my number here now, my football player, and I wanna move that behind the football player for now. So let's do that, um, command, and then just use your left square bracket. If you have if you see it faded like that, that means you've gone too far because now it's behind the layer of the background that we added the gradient feather to. So you still want that, you still want it to look like that, okay? Now, we're gonna be creating a outline of this because we're gonna be adding another texture or a pattern inside that number. Um, so I always suggest if you're going to need this, um, to edit the number, what I would do is just create another copy. So option, drag another copy onto the pasteboard so you can always reference it again, okay? So now that I have the number again, I'm going to create it into outline mode. So this is, you could do it in Illustrator, basically means it's not editable text any longer. The easiest way of doing that is Shift, Command, O, but if you want to do it the long form way, um, Command Z, just go to type and then create outlines, okay? Same thing. Now that I have that intact, I'm gonna go to my CC libraries again, and I should have another pattern here. It's called Artwork 35. I'll rename that to Lines so you know what it is. And just make sure that you have that selected. I'm gonna drag that here. You can see I have a line pattern there, and I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm clicked to that that um, number, it's easy to drop it into something else. Make sure that you have that selected and then just drop it in. You can see that it's there. If I double click, let me just move it off to the side here. See, if I double click, you can it tr it's treated as a, an image now. So I could do Shift Option Command C and I've added this line pattern, which I can now go into my properties panel again, go to opacity, let's give it a screen and let's turn that opacity down quite a bit. Um, let's go to about 25, okay? I think that works. And now we can move this back to the center. So just drag it, hold your shift key if you have to, and then when you see that magenta line there, you're golden. Now, one other thing we wanna do here is just tone that number down because you can see it's too intense against our football player against the name, against the, the um, burst. So we really wanna tone that down, still make it visible, but um, not as intense. So with it selected, let's go to your effects panel or in the properties panel. You can see I do a lot of the work from the properties panel because it's like a one-stop shop for me. So I have it selected. I'm gonna go to the effects dropdown and add a gradient feather to this, okay? Same concept as when we were adding the gradient feather to the background, only this time we're adding it to the number. We have to change the angle. So instead of zero, the, the only difference here is I added a gradient feather of um, radial to the background. We do want linear here. We're gonna change the angle to minus 90 degrees. Just hit tab and you can see that it fades from bottom to top and then just hit okay. And then as a last step, 
let's make this multiply. Actually, let's do hard light. I thought hard light works the best here. And then let's just tone the opacity down a bit, maybe 50%, let's see how that looks. Okay, so you can still kind of make out the bottom part. So let's let's just maybe make it 60%, just so we're not losing a lot of the bottom. I also want to add a, just add a little bit more depth to this number, an inner, inner shadow, okay? I think something like that works. You can play around with the angle here, okay? And I also want to add a, maybe a bevel and emboss as well. You can see how it becomes more of a strong looking number now, right? And again, you can change the angle of the bevel and emboss as well. Okay, so see what works best for you. But you can see we've added a lot more depth to that to that number. So I'm gonna click OK and see where we're at here. I'm just gonna hit Command minus to zoom out. And you can see now we've added the number with a gradient feather, we've added the burst, we've added his name, as well as um, the, the running back position and um, the sophomore. We've added the name of the school and the logo. Next, we'll add some, some stats to the bottom right, and then we'll start adding some interactivity and animation to this poster. All right, as you can see here, I've added some stats. I'm gonna zoom in here. I have some stats that I wanna add on the right side of the football player. So what I'll do is I'll bring in the headers first. So I have 2021, 2022 stats. And here I have a collection of stats here. If I open my layers panel, let me just move these off. You can see I have them selected. There's games played, yards, rushing yards, uh, rushing touchdowns, and rushing yards per game. I went ahead and renamed these so it's easier when we're setting up the object states and um, having them as an inter interactive uh, component to this poster. So I'm gonna select these and I wanna make sure that they're all aligned, so let's do that. I'll align the bottom edges and then I'll bring them over here for now. Maybe I'll align the left edge of the stats with the header. Same thing here. I have another header here, which I'm gonna bring down. This is season records. I'm gonna select these. There's three of them here. That's four touchdowns in one game. Uh, yards versus Iowa and yards per carry. I'm gonna set these all up um, in the InDesign document for you and I'll have a text um, file which you can draw this copy from as well. So you don't have to worry about creating your own. I'm gonna select this and bring it down here as well. And so I have, I have these all set up and what I can do, let me just lock these background layers because I'm gonna need to drag and I don't wanna move those. So that's texture, JPEG, texture, JPEG, perfect. So now I can grab these and not have to worry. Another thing I'd like to do is just move these in just a little bit because I have to add two arrows on each side. So I'm going to hold my shift key and do maybe three. Hit right arrow three times. Let's do the same thing here. One, two, three. Because if I go to my CC libraries, you see I have an arrow up and an arrow down. So let's bring both of those in. Click one there and then drag this one and click that. So I want one here, and again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure there's enough space, so I'm just gonna click and drag and move these ones down. Let me zoom in here, and let's make sure that we have enough space here. So something like that, and then what I'll do here is I'll just center the stats to the arrows, and then kind of make sure, you can eyeball it, move them up or down, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna click to select those and let's just create another copy of it. Something like that is fine. And then you can just do the same thing. Select all of them and then just eyeball it. Something like that is fine. Obviously you would take more time to finesse this and make sure everything lines up. Um, I'm just kind of roughing it out here. Okay, so something like that is fine. Basically what I want to do is have these arrows control the stats on both of these elements. So the stats and the season records. Let's start with the stats. I'm gonna select all of these. 
And you can see in my layers panel, they're still selected. Anything that's highlighted here is selected. I'm gonna open my object states panel. Let's drag that into this layer, into this window here. Again, if you don't have object states, window, interactive, object states. Perfect. With all these selected, I'm gonna click on convert selection into multi-state object. If I do that, there's state one, there's state two, state three, state four. I want to rename this. I always suggest doing that. So let's just call this 2021-22 uh, stats, okay? That's easy to remember. And now let's set up these arrows here to control these this multi-state object. So let's start with the up arrow. So that will be, actually let's start with the down because that'll be the next. And for this, we'll want buttons and forms. I already have mine open here. Same thing, window, interactive, buttons and forms. I have the down button selected. Let's convert that into a button. And this is called down, let's call next arrow one, okay? And for this, the event will be on release or tap. The action will be go to next state, okay? So you can see in the object here, it has 2021, 22 stats. So that's what we renamed that multi-state object. Let's click on the up arrow and it's the same thing, button. The name will be down, uh, let's make this previous arrow one. And the event here on release or tab, the action is go to previous state, okay? Now you can set these to stop uh, at the first state or just have them loop through. I tend to leave them looped, which is fine as well, okay? So if I go ahead and press the EPUB preview window, let's test that out, see how it looks. And you can see that when I scroll up and down, I can scroll through those stats, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and set this one up, same thing. Let's select all four, go to object states, and convert that selection into a multi-state object. State one, state two, state three. This is called season records, okay? So you could set up as many multi-state objects as you want, but renaming them is very important because when you're setting up the button structures, it's easier to um, determine which multi-state is what rather than seeing multi-state one, multi-state two, and so on, okay? So season records is fine. Let's click on this up, or let's click the down arrow, buttons and forms. Let's turn that into a button. And this is next button two. And the action here is go to next state. But the object, this is where it comes in handy. Change it from the stats to season records, okay? Let's do the same thing to uh, the up arrow. So I'm gonna click button, and this is called previous button two and um, the action is previous state and the object is season records that's an easy one to miss because if you don't set that then it'll it'll start changing the stats which you don't want to do that okay so i think we we've set them up let's test them out always test out your work to make sure that it's working as intended perfect so that's working fine you can add an animation for these to fade in so if I wanted to do that, I'll click this multi-state object. You're already on clicked on state one, then double click to drive into that selection. Then you can add an animation to this so it fades in. So it's not so hard, like a hard transition. So you can do like a fade in with a 0.25, okay? And you can see um, it, it'll actually it'll actually take effect on state load, which is fine. So if you wanted to set up another one, click on state two, then double click to drive into that selection, click animation, choose a fade in, and then 0.25, right? Because you want that to happen pretty quickly. Um, anything, anything slower than that, like even half a second might be too slow, but test it out and see what works best for you. Object states, state three, double click, go back to animation, choose a fade in, and then let's change that to 0.25. There's just one more to do here. Click state four, animation, actually 
state four, then double click, then go to animation, then choose fade in and set the duration 0.25, okay? So let's go back to object states, click on state one, and let's test this out and see how that looks with the fade in. The only thing we have to change is not have it to ch fade in on page load, but otherwise I think that looks better than having a hard transition as well. So that's an option for you. I won't set it to these ones because you get the, the idea. The other thing I want to do is have the burst come in and the player fade in as well. So if I click the burst, let's I think I lock that layer. So let's go there and let's choose it here. And the burst, let's go to animation and choose a zoom in 2D on page load with maybe 0.5 seconds. And let's see how that looks. The, the, the opacity doesn't work in the preview mode here. So you can see it comes in at a harsher, um, it's not as blended as it does look on the layout here. But you get the concept here. Okay, if I play that again, that comes in on page load, which looks nice. And then I can go ahead and scroll through these. Okay, and the other thing I wanna do is click on my subject here. I think I locked that layer as well. Um, football player PSD. So let's click that. And again, let's add an animation here of fade in. Let's do 0.5 and see how that looks. So the animations happen as you set them. So the burst will come in and then the football player. Let's see how that looks. There's the burst, there's the football player. And then we can go ahead and scroll through these, which is nice as well. As a last step, let's go ahead and publish this online and I'll show you how it looks in a web browser. All right, to publish the project online, click on the share button in the upper right hand corner and choose publish online. That'll bring up your publish your document online window where you can add a title I'm just going to call this interactive underscore poster. Um, you can add a description, some other things. We only have a single page. Um, you, could, you would hit publish and that would just publish and create a uh, URL for you. I already went ahead and published mine. So here it is. I'm going to refresh the page. Now the burst still doesn't, the opacity oftentimes doesn't work for web. So if, if you're not happy with the burst, just, just go ahead and get rid of it. I think it still works without the burst, um, but for print, you saw that it, it looked really, really good. So let me just do that again. I'm gonna refresh. There's the burst, there's the player. I would speed up that football player to about um, 2.25 seconds, just so it's coming in a little bit quicker. Um, and, but the, you can see that the stats menu works here, which we've created clickable uh, scroll throughs for both the season records and the stats. So that, that looks great. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create an interactive poster with animation using Adobe InDesign. If you found it helpful, leave a like or comment below and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date with all my latest content. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design using Adobe InDesign, go ahead and check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.